Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be hand feeding a Polistes dominula or a European paper wasp. This wasp was captured in June of 2022 here in northeast Indiana, along with her nest, which contained some active larvae and some eggs. Here, the wasp eats a mealworm from a pet shop. When the wasp is in captivity, it's the closest thing we can get to their natural prey, which is typically caterpillars and other insects when they're out hunting in the wild to find protein for their larva. You can see the wasp cutting up the worm into manageable portions that she'll malixate into pulp for the larva. Poor mealworms had better days, I know, but Mother Nature is uh, it's pretty grim sometimes. The adult wasp actually gains some fluids and some proteins and digests that herself for some sustenance while she's malixating meat for the pulp she'll feed to the larva. So she does get some nutrition from this process, but primarily it's for the larva. To make it easier to film this nest, uh, we arranged it in the cage so that it, it's kind of laying upside down. Uh, typically the openings of the cells face down toward the ground. As she finishes up the malaxation process, you'll see her turn and start to begin feeding some of the pulp to the larva by sticking her head into the cells where the larvae are face up. It's a mouth-to-mouth -mouth feeding technique called trophallaxis, and that's how they'll generally exchange food. It's a two-way deal because the mother provides protein to the larva, and the larva secrete a sweet carbohydrate fluid that the mother drinks. So it's a two-way exchange of nutrients, and everybody benefits from that. At the end of each feeding, the mother will stop and groom herself, that's her way of cleaning up. They groom themselves constantly throughout the day to keep disease and debris and dust out of the way. It maintains the health of the nest. In this feeding, we feed the foundress a fruit fly. She kind of loves these. They're a good little snack. Doesn't take her long at all to malixate these and feed them to the larva. You'll notice various bottle caps. These are used as food containers and water containers inside the habitat that's been prepared for the wasp. These wasps in particular, the Dominula, they are very adaptable to just about any environment. And that's part of the reason they became so ubiquitous in North America. They're considered an invasive species initially. Uh, they arrived here and really got established, they think, around the 1970s came across the oceans from Europe and Asia in uh, cargo vessels probably through international trade. Here we feed her a spider that was recently killed here in the office. It's springtime, it's spider season, so whenever we catch one we zap it with a bug zapper which is a little tennis racket looking thing that knocks it out and then we feed it to the wasps and they really seem to eat up spiders pretty readily so long as they're fresh kills. They don't seem to like them if they get too dried out. You'll notice in these shots of the nest that the larvae that are getting ready to pupate, they will put a silk cap that they weave themselves over the top of their cell. And they are no longer fed at that point. Their larval stage is coming to an end. And they will now pupate, like in a cocoon, into adult wasps. And the wasps that come out of that cell, at the end of that stage, will be the first generation of female worker wasps that will help the queen or the foundress maintain and uh, provide food for the nest. Here she accepts another spider, malixates that. The process they do is, is interesting. They'll chop away legs and hard bits off and then they'll dig into the meat and turn that into pulp. It's very similar to the way people prepare their own food. When they cut up protein uh, from animal products and whatnot, they dump what they don't need and they carry on with the best parts. Here she accepts a black fly. This was interesting because rather than uh, malixate the thing all by herself, she went ahead and did part of it, but then she flew over to some of her buddies in the cage and actually gave the fly to another wasp. And that wasp took it and shared it and did most of the malixating on that one, as you'll see here in the footage. 
This is the other wasp that the foundress from the nest gave the fly to, and that one gets busy here doing the malaxating. So far I'd say small flies seem to be the favorite food because they're quick and easy to manage. They're pretty soft, not a lot of hard bits on them, and I think that's why they go for those quicker. For the adult wasps in captivity, we feed them primarily honey because they live mostly on sweet carbohydrate liquids, and honey seems to do the trick. They like it very much, and it seems to sustain them. The Polistes dominula wasps that share this cage, this habitat, with this particular wasp that was captured here in June were actually captured and put into captivity back in October of 21. And here we are in June of 22, and they are still thriving on just honey and water. And they've adapted very well to captivity. Here we have some footage that illustrates one of the more grim parts of Mother Nature's journey here with the wasps. When there's a need for extra protein, they will sometimes sacrifice their own larva and eat that for protein and fluids. They call that food scarcity when there's a shortage of protein. And so the wasps will absolutely pull their own larva right out of the nest and eat it and feed it to the other larva. This allows them to survive as a group and the few that they have to kill for that purpose serve the greater good but it evidently happens in the wild and in captivity. They pull the larva out, uh, they chop it up into manageable portions, and then they malixate that. They'll actually share it with the adult wasps and also with the larva, and therefore everybody gets extra protein. And this may occur multiple times throughout whatever period they're dealing with uh, scarcity of food. They also may do this when they think the larva is not thriving for some reason. Now, that particular larva will be killed in this process, nothing goes to waste, that's for sure. But I must say, after raising these nests, you watch the larvae, you kind of watch them come up from eggs, and the last thing you want to see is one of them get pulled out and eaten for dinner, but uh, that's the way it goes in the world of Mother Nature. Here the foundress wasp comes back after sharing some of the larva protein with the adults, and she begins to feed it to some of the other larvae. Let's hope these guys get their silk caps on as soon as possible here because the faster they get a silk cap covering over that top of that cell, uh, the less risk there is of this kind of thing where they get sacrificed for the others. This time one of the other wasps in the habitat came and pulled the larva out. The mother's actually the one on the left. She's the foundress of this particular nest. And I'm not sure she was on board with this particular larva pullout. It's hard to tell. She looks a little taken aback there for a minute, but honestly, who knows? Social wasps, they work in a very collective manner. So clearly she didn't try to fight that one off much. I have seen her fight off other wasps that approached the nest in the past. So maybe it's just a community understanding that more food is needed for more of the wasps and they're going to get it where they need to get it. You'll see this wasp who pulled the larva out, take it all the way up the stick to the top of their little house structure that's inside the habitat and bring it over and actually share it with another wasp. And the two of them share this protein. And therefore, again, nothing goes to waste. And most of these wasps in the habitat with the foundress and the nest, uh, they've been in there since October, going on nine months now, plus, and they have not had protein during that period of time, only honey and water. So perhaps they're just due for protein. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll be posting more videos of our local Indiana wasp species as the season rolls along. So check back soon and have a good one.